Hey guys, so today I left work a little bit earlier than usual and um, what I'm going to do is some meal prep that I didn't get done this weekend. So, simple stuff, quick stuff, healthy stuff that you can eat for like the next four or five days if you really stretch it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off, I have bunch of spinach and I'm going to make a frittata. Um, I love making a big frittata for the week, it usually gets me five days, I do spinach, um, kind of whatever vegetables I have on hand, so some spinach, onions, maybe some garlic, I'll put a little cottage cheese in there, and it's going to be really good. That probably takes uh, five to ten minutes of prep, and then you throw it in the oven. Um, I have the oven preset for 400. I'm going to roast some broccoli, and I'm going to roast some sweet potatoes as well, so I think 400 is probably a good temperature for all of that. Usually if I make a frittata, I do it around 350, but it can survive 400. So we'll do the spinach. I'm gonna clean that up. This here is broccoli rabe, which I love. And I think I have a recipe on the Nicely Fitco blog using this. I love bitter greens. So this is kind of like, if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of like a cross between like broccoli and like a lettuce or something like that so it holds up pretty well to um, high heat so what I like to do is I'll cook this um, in some olive oil with garlic and crushed red pepper and then um, add a little sausage and combine it with some pasta this is gluten-free fusilli um, and it's fresh so this is not um, this is not your dry pasta. This stuff cooks in like two minutes, which is awesome. So for tonight, we're going to do the broccoli robin sausage with the pasta. Um, going to make some sweet potatoes, just basic roast sweet potatoes, some basic roasted broccoli, and I'm going to make a frittata for breakfast. So this is going to be great. The sweet potatoes and the broccoli, that's going to be sides for probably the rest of the week, to be honest. I also have in the fridge, uh, I know like super creative, but haddock, which I made last week, um, it was on sale again. I like how it tastes. It's quick. It's easy. It's healthy. So I've got some haddock that I'm going to cook up tomorrow and I've got some chicken breast. The way I like to do it. So if you take some basic ingredients, like I eat fish and meat, right? So, for that, it's just really easy to have your protein. Those are gonna probably spoil the fastest anyway. Make that the day of, right? So the fish takes 15 minutes to cook. If I have my broccoli, my sweet potatoes ready to go, I just throw the fish in the pan or in the oven and it's done and fresh when I want it. Same thing with the chicken breasts. Um, they're honestly the easiest thing. You can do the same thing. Oven, pan, it does not take that long. You can put whatever combination of seasonings or spices that you want this good stuff so i think we'll start off and wash some spinach and you probably don't need to watch too much of that but i'm gonna show you this stuff if you can get it this is what you want none of that like boxed baby spinach stuff you want like look at the leaves on this really dark green it's very nutritious really good for you tastes really really good so you can see this is covered in dirt <laughs> um, so I'm gonna wash this probably like three or four times so that I'm not like eating a crunchy frittata in the morning but anyway I'll be right back okay so this is what I'm doing I've got the spinach if you don't have one of these salad spinners, I strongly recommend you get one. It's just like a little basket goes in a bowl and um, it's got like a pump that spins it around and dries it. So like see how murky and gross this water is? You can do this at home if you don't have a salad spinner, just get a big bowl and get a um, strainer or a sieve and you can do the same thing. So I'm gonna rinse this probably two or three times 
I made a frittata last week and it was delicious, but I only rinsed the spinach like twice and it was crunchy, not in a good way. So um, we're gonna wash this and we'll be right back. Okay, so while the spinach is washing, I decided to go run to the freezer and see what kind of stuff I have. This is the beautiful thing about a frittata. It is perfect for basically using up whatever produce you have lying around that either is about to go bad or that you want to use up. So these are just um, organic uh, pre-cooked chicken sausages. Um, pretty solid. I needed to use them up. They've been in the freezer for a while. It's an extra hit of protein. Um, for me, I'm really bad about having breakfast. So doing something like this, having it prepared, having it full of healthy greens and protein and all that, it's, it's going to help me out because otherwise I don't usually eat like at all during the day. And then I eat way too much for dinner. And at like 10 o'clock, I'm hungry for dinner part two. So that's not going to work for fat boy winter. All right. So we've got the sausages cooking. These are frozen, but they're pre-cooked. So we just have to heat them up so that they're not rock hard when I put them in. I've got the spinach going to be the third wash, so this is probably going to be good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. A lot less sand and stuff in there right now. So the next thing I'm going to do, zoom in a little bit better. There we go. So sweet potatoes. These are just three sweet potatoes. Um, they're going to get a peel. And I'm going to cut them into like maybe half inch rings. So you guys will see. All right, so see, I've got peeled. I'm gonna do three more of them. So I kind of, these are just different varieties. I honestly couldn't tell you what they are. There's different varieties of sweet potato, I feel like for me, might as well try out different ones. They all cost pretty much the same. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of sweet potato in the world, if I'm honest. Um, but if you roast them right, you put some seasoning on it, it's pretty good. And I like to use, I've got this stuff. It's a um, maple pepper. So it has maple sugar, black pepper, coriander, turmeric, ginger, nutmeg, fenugreek, fenugreek, anise seed, cumin, cinnamon, mustard, and spices. This is really good. It's kind of like sweet, but also a little savory, which is nice. All right, sausages are done. I'm gonna let them cool a little bit before I cut them. You see, this stuff is just super easy. It doesn't require a whole ton of effort or skill. Um, yeah, so if you're someone who doesn't think that they have the skills in the kitchen, this is perfectly easy to do. Like, this is literally, you're peeling a potato. If you can't peel a potato, I can't help you. You shouldn't be watching cooking videos. See like an occupational therapist or something so uh cool there we go the other thing you can do is like if you're really 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 pressed for time and you know you're just the kind of person who is not gonna cook if it's not like unbelievably simple this is the type of thing like sweet potato or like butternut squash things like that some of these like starchy root vegetables. You can usually find this stuff like pre-cut. Uh, so see, just making little rings, about a quarter inch thick there about. I'm gonna throw them in a bowl. Cut 
cut the tips off. But we're just going to make these rings. And we're going to put some olive oil, some seasoning. And we go in the oven and it's like 35 minutes or they're about until they're done. But like I was saying, you can get this stuff pre-cut. This is honestly the biggest time consuming part of this. Like I have a butternut squash somewhere in here. Like I like making roast butternut squash cubes. It's a pain in the neck to cut it up. Like it's not hard, but it takes a few minutes. If you're truly pressed for time and truly lazy, um, just, you can get it pre-cut up if it means you're going to cook for yourself because you all should be cooking for yourselves because it's easy, it's more affordable, you can have fun with it, and if you're trying to follow a diet or lose weight or gain weight or just be healthy, this beats takeout any day of the week and it really beats prepared foods so I'm gonna give it a little oh maybe two teaspoons worth of this spice I'm gonna stir it up it's probably about two teaspoons of olive oil in there too you really don't have to be precise with this stuff you just kind of add it um, however you like if you like something super spicy or whatever, um, like this doesn't have any heat to it. It's more just like savory spices. But if you're somebody who likes, you know, spicy Cajun sweet potatoes, something like that, I'm sure there's a mix out there you can make your own. Um, I don't want too much spice on this or too much, um, Seasoning rather, because trying to watch the overall calories. And this has got sugar, and I don't want that much sugar. So I'm going to grab a tray. I'll be right back. This is just a regular old baking sheet. So you're gonna want one of these if you don't have one. And I'm gonna use parchment paper here. You can use aluminum foil, but um, I did that last week and they stuck to the aluminum foil. So, which is weird because they are Oil, but we're gonna try it with parchment paper. So just lay your discs out. You don't want them like stacked on top of each other because they'll basically just steam and they won't roast and get that nice, um, you know, kind of crispy outside. Just lay them out, give everybody some breathing room so the steam can escape and all that. Super easy. Super, super easy. And it's like 7 o'clock on a Monday. This is not stressing me out. There's nothing like complicated with this where you have to be screwing around watching it while it cooks. Basically, you put it in for 30, 35 minutes. Um, set a timer 15 minutes in. Flip them. And uh, then that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it, right? So here's our sheet. Here's our sweet potatoes. Done. Set timer for 15. So I might hold off on these guys and actually steam them. But um, next thing I'm gonna get going is the frittata. 
So I've got my spinach. I'm gonna clean up real quick here. This thing is a bench scraper. It is get one if you cook. It's the best thing ever. Makes clean up or like, you know, you're like chopping up veggies or something. You want to throw it in a pan. This makes it so easy. You just kind of boom, done, all clean. You know what? I'm going to reuse this bowl. I'm not even going to rinse it. This will taste good with eggs. So take little sausages down there again I don't want them like super hot they're cool enough to touch right now but you don't want to take like really hot stuff and put it in when you have the eggs because what's gonna happen is it's gonna like cook your eggs before you want them to cook and that's not good. You want to control the process. So I'm going to take, these are like pretty small, see they're the thin little guys. Some small cloves of garlic, smack it, crush it up a little bit and then just peel it. There's all kinds of different ways to approach using garlic. I'm pretty, I'm good to just smash it and then throw it in a pan or you can get fancy and dice it whatever you want there's no there's no like right way to do it and I'm sure actually that's a lie I'm sure there is a right way to do it I just don't care I do what I want so I'm gonna do some garlic and some oil Smash the garlic up, give it a rough shot, because I like to saute my spinach with some garlic oil. So we're going to get this heated up. You can see there, not, you don't need a lot of oil. The spinach is going to be kind of wet, which is fine. It's going to help steam it. Just kind of flavoring the oil with the garlic. Giving it a little smack helps the uh, skin come off, by the way. And giving it a smack helps release some of the oils within the garlic and it tastes good. So here's the spinach, um, it really cooks down, so I'm not going to chop it up or anything, I might kind of tear it a little bit when I put it in, but we will see, kind of might just decide that on the fly. It's really like up to you, I don't mind having big clumps of spinach in my frittata, actually kind of like it. So I'm going to use this is the top I was telling you about, just spin salad or whatever greens you're using. So you put it on, press it, it spins around, get through the water. Like I said, I don't mind a little bit of water and the spinach greens because it'll help them cook, but you don't want it wet. All right, check that out. Nice. So I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and some black pepper and give that a stir. So bear with me one sec.
Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, we just got one of these, um, like, gimbal stabilizers, and I'm trying to figure out how it works. Okay, there we go. So, much better. A little pepper. Some salt. Just about a like, pinch, half a teaspoon, something like that. I've got it on medium heat, you don't need to be ripping it. And then just stir it up. So a combination of the water from when the spinach was being cleaned, and then the inherent liquid within the uh, spinach itself is going to come out, kind of steam the spinach. So you want to kind of cook it down so that you don't have these big leaves, but rather you have cooked spinach, which I'm sure you all have seen at one point in your lives. I'll show you what it looks like, what we're going for. I turn the heat up a little bit more, like medium high. You don't want to, you don't want to like pour this in to your eggs when it's all wet. That would kind of make a soggy frittata, which nobody wants. Okay. So that's gonna cook for like another thirty seconds. I'm gonna cut these guys up. And then we're going to move on to our pasta for tonight. And probably the next three nights. Because I'm going to make two, I think these are like nine ounces. So I'm going to do two nine ounce containers of fresh pasta. And a pound of sausage. Look at this thing. A pound of sausage. Thing makes a thump when you drop it. All right. Spinach. That is done. That is good. So I'm going to try and drain a little bit of the liquid out. like this. Yeah, there we go. Pour it out. Okay. So I'm going to dump it into this bowl here. Let it cool. I might even put it, I'm going to go put it over by the window. Sausage, dump that in there as well. While that's chilling out for a second, I'm gonna clean up this broccoli rob. So same concept with the spinach and the broccoli rob. This stuff's gotta have some dirt on it. Probably don't wanna eat that, unless you do, I don't know. Um, There's all different kinds of ways you can cook this stuff too. Like you can roast it, which is pretty good. Um, you can just boil it and do it that way. Nothing wrong with that. Put it in some water, um, salted water and boil it. And then drain it and kind of dress it up however you like. You can put olive oil and lemon, it's pretty good. This stuff's really good for you too. It's just these bitter, Dark leafy greens are packed full of nutrients. So I'm gonna do kind of a pan 
saute kind of thing. So same concept as the spinach, some oil and some garlic. I'm gonna put crushed red pepper because I like that kind of thing. And um, it's super easy, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. So more garlic. If you cook like me, your hands are gonna smell like garlic and there's not really a good way around that. Um, you can try like lemon soap or something, I don't know. I, I try and wash my hands when I'm doing this stuff pretty frequently. Cause it's like, it's oils, right? So garlic has its own oils and that's what gives it the pungent garlic aroma that you're used to. This might be too much. So this is like, call it, do like five, medium cloves of garlic. Um, same thing, I'm gonna do this real simple. Smash, take the peels off. See, it just kind of broke up. I'm gonna heat my pan up. Let's probably get the water going, actually. Pause. Oh, that's hot. So that's filling up. Oil. Get the biggest, I love this pan. It's the best, it's just a deep, wide um, saute pan. I love these because you can do big batches of like kind of family style dinner. And that was about a tablespoon and a half of oil. So I'm gonna throw in my garlic. But yeah, one of these big pans makes it really easy. If you're gonna do like a big pasta dish or you're gonna make a bunch of really anything, having a big deep pan like that is great. Actually, that's one of my most common go-tos. Like if you're gonna build out a kitchen, you know, cookware set, get something big like this especially if you're cooking for you know meal prep or doing like dinners with friends get something like this and get yourself a dutch oven so this is one of these not that kind of dutch oven this kind of dutch oven um so this is an enamel cast iron dutch oven you can make soup you can make stock you can make bread all kinds of stuff really really useful so I'd recommend that. Get our garlic going. Man, this pan is hot. All right, so we've got a pot, like halfway full of water, just enough to cover the pasta. That's up and running. So when you're cooking with garlic, I'm gonna show you this. Nice, right? When you're cooking with garlic, you don't want it to go past like golden brown. So this was turned up. I just brought the heat down because if you keep going with it, it gets kind of bitter. You don't want that. Broccoli Rob, Th these are the ends. I usually trim them off because they can get a little like woody and um, that's not great. So I just trim off the ends, cut them in half. 
like that. And then they go in the pot. I'm gonna add some of the crushed pepper too, by the way. Just these pepper flakes. I like a fair amount of the pepper flakes, but you can omit it if you like, if you're not into that kind of thing. Some people are a little bit more sensitive with their stomachs. Turn the heat up a little bit on this. As you do want to cook. All right. This is some white wine. I'm gonna use a little bit of this, maybe quarter cup. Um, a little bit later on, maybe like three minutes in, once the uh, broccoli rob starts to wilt a little bit, this is gonna go in and it's gonna be good. So, time to flip. Yeah, time to flip our sweet potatoes. New York City kitchens, baby. Absolutely no room to do meal prep. But that's okay. We make do. Sweet. All right. All right, so we've got the frittata in. Basically, we took the spinach, we chopped up the um, breakfast sausages, added about a half cup of cottage cheese because cottage cheese pound for pound is like the best for protein. It's like a half cup is something like 14 grams. Um, so we've got that going. Basically just put it on the stove with some butter and oil um, and let it do its thing. So we'll check that in about 15 minutes. It should be done. Our water's not boiling yet. So what I'm gonna do, usually what I, what I tend to do is I'll take the sausage, cook it in the pan that I'm gonna cook the broccoli robin, then put in the broccoli robin and all that. Problem is, it's like greasy, and um, it's, it's not the best for you. So I'm gonna cook the sausage separately in its own pan and then just take it out and add it instead of like having it sit in its own grease. Now, that tastes better. You bet your ass it tastes better. But if you eat a lot of that, you're gonna have a big ass. So that's what we're trying to fight. We're fighting the COVID ass. It's a real thing, look it up. All right, so here's my pound of sausage. Just gonna split it open. And basically, you don't need a lot to get this going, but a little oil, just a little bit. That's like a teaspoon. Get the pan pretty hot. Got it medium high heat. Because you want to basically just brown this. It doesn't have to be cooked through. You just want to brown it. And then you're going to take this, and you're going to add it to your pasta and broccoli rabe. All right, a little bit of chicken broth we're going to use too. I usually make my own, but this, this package stuff is fine. 
it doesn't take like you know eight hours so clean up a little bit okay so there's about six minutes left for the um, sweet potatoes they're almost done um, we flipped them so that's about ready I'm going to take this literally use your hands don't be scared pull out chunks of the sausage kind of like bite-sized pieces you can always like chop it up in the pan too but I'm just going to add bite-sized pieces looks like my pasta water is getting going now I don't want to put the pasta in just yet because like I said this is fresh fresh pasta cooks in like two minutes two three minutes um, and I also don't want to cook it all the way in the water I want to cook like three quarters of the way and then throw it in the pot or in the pan rather so that it picks up all the other flavors Wash your hands after you handle meat. Definitely important. You never know where it's been. So we are cruising. This is basically the end stage now. I'm going to turn this back on. You want to salt your water for pasta, so a nice couple pinches. Really depends on how much water you have, but it's important to salt it. Basically it raises the boiling point, so it cooks the pasta faster, and it flavors your pasta. So there you go. Alright, so broccoli rabe is back on. I'm going to get that heated up. Just try and clean up a little bit as I go, so I'm not like trip, tripping all over myself in the small kitchen. There we go. This is getting warm. I'm gonna add, like I said, maybe a quarter cup, just just a little bit of the wine. It's gonna kind of brighten everything up. It's acidic. Gonna taste good. All right, the pasta water is boiling. So I'm gonna flip the sausage, see how that's going. Not quite there yet, but close, another minute or two. And I just got that full blast cooking away. Mm. All right, that's good. So, chicken stock. This is like, this is one cup. I used half of it. And these are good. You can just put back in the fridge. Use it another time. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I want to get this kind of boiling. We're ready for the pasta now, so. Yeah, so it says it cooks in three minutes. I'm going to do it for two, and then I'm going to pull it out. One back. That's two batches. Looks like the sweet potatoes are done, so I'm going to turn that off. Set the timer two minutes and on. The pasta is ready in another minute. Oh. All right, so this is what we're going for. See, nice and brown. This is bubbling away. Everything's happy. But see how there's all this grease and juice, etc. Like I said, it's tasty, but it's not the best for you. And there's, obviously there's gonna be better things to eat than sausage. This is just kind of what I had on hand. And this is what goes with this dish. Um, but you could do things like turkey sausage or chicken sausage. Those are fine. Or you can omit meat altogether and just simply do the broccoli rabe and some oil and garlic with your pasta and that'd be delicious so two one and the pasta is done all right the sweet potatoes are done too so i don't need to put them back in you get a little scooper wire scooper. I'm going to turn off the, bra or the sausage. And I'm just going to scoop it out so that we're not capturing all the grease. So that'll stay in the pan and not go into the food. Same thing with the pasta, so lid off, uh, use the scooper. Alright. That is hot. Alright, so I've turned off all the burners except this one. And I'm just going to scoop the pasta out. So I don't, I don't like to just dump the water. Because you can use the water, and you should use the water, to help make your sauce. Because it has the starches from the pasta. And it helps to kind of like thicken your whatever sauce you're making. So in this case, 
The sauce is literally just the whatever remnants of the chicken stock, the juices from your broccoli rabe, and pasta water. It's pretty simple. So that's that. Give it a stir. I'm going to show you guys. So you can kind of see there's some liquid in there, right? So it's not enough though, because we're kind of finishing the cooking of the pasta. So let me grab my mitt. You can do this if you have a ladle or something. It's easy enough. I'm going to put, it's about a half cup. I'm going to stir. I'm going to kill the heat because I don't need that. Nice. So there we go. It's pretty much done. I'm going to taste it. Yeah, that's really good. Doesn't really need anything. Doesn't need any salt. Doesn't need any pepper. Um, you can add Parmesan cheese if you want, Pecorino cheese. I'll probably add Pecorino at the table, but this is, this is it. This is dinner for the next like three days. It's delicious. It's pretty good for you. This is gluten-free. And um, we have our sweet potato for later in the week. We've got our frittata. I'll turn the light on for you. Our frittata looks like it's almost done too, so that makes me happy. And uh, the last thing I'm going to probably do tonight, once I clean up a little bit, I'm literally going to throw some broccoli on a sheet pan, throw it in the oven for, I don't know, like half hour, 40 minutes. A little olive oil salt and pepper and that'll be done i could also just steam it so i'm i'm undecided on that but um i'm gonna finish up i'm gonna get cleaned up and uh, i'm gonna have some dinner and you guys you guys will be seeing this in a couple days so enjoy thanks all right so it's been an hour since we pulled everything out of the fridge to start cooking and i just want to show you guys we're at. We have roasted sweet potatoes. We have, this is for Sophia and I, this will be probably two dinners, two lunches worth um, each of broccoli rabe and sausage pasta with gluten-free fusilli. This is my spinach frittata. That's going to last me a week. I've got a pot going with boiling water. I'm going to steam the broccoli that I have because it's super quick and it's super healthy and I love just having steamed broccoli with a little bit of olive oil and lemon uh, and that's great as a side with like fish um, which I'm going to definitely be doing uh, probably tomorrow for dinner um, so literally an hour and we're all cleaned up I mean this is I washed everything a second ago so that's it one hour on Monday night. I've got food for the whole week. It's going to be delicious, nutritious, and um, we're going to be working on getting this fat boy winter kicking some real ass. So we'll see you guys soon. I'm going to enjoy my dinner. Good night.